I have been whitewater kayaking since I was eight years old. And I have kayaked every major whitewater river within eight hours of here. But you know the one place I haven't kayaked? Market Street. <laughs> <laughs> and I shouldn't be able to, but anybody who's spent time in Charleston is familiar with the flooding caused by runoff when, at high tides, our rain can't wash into the waterways. And when this runoff does wash into our waterways at low tides, it carries with it pollution from our streets and roofs into our marshes and waterways where we get our seafood. And anybody who survives summers in Charleston knows how hot it is in July and August and how hot it can be in urban environments. Well, what if I told you that there is a simple technology that can reduce the runoff, pollution, and heat in cities while saving you money on your electricity bill. And one would wonder why this technology is not more prevalent. Well, hold that thought. Now, I trace my interest in the environment back to my summer spent in a small town in the mountains of Western North Carolina. And believe it or not, we didn't have TV or internet, so my friends and I had to entertain ourselves outside. Shocking, I know. But <laughs> These experiences gave me an interest in the environment, an appreciation. And this appreciation, along with my interest in building, led me to take a course in sustainable engineering at Yale University the summer before my junior year of high school. Now, while at Yale, I discovered green roofs. Now, green roofs are vegetated roofs, or roofs covered with plants, like you can see here on Chicago City Hall. And green roofs can help solve numerous environmental problems, including all of those we looked at earlier, the heat, runoff, and pollution in cities. Now, we're all familiar with how much hotter it is standing in an asphalt parking lot in the city than in a field in the country. And where would you rather be? Well, this temperature difference is known as the urban heat island effect. Now, the urban heat island effect is shown in this thermal image taken by a NASA satellite, where red shows higher temperatures and blue shows cooler temperatures. Now, on the left of the screen, you can see Salt Lake City in bright red, and it is much, much hotter than the surrounding rural areas in blue to the right of your screen. And this is because the impervious surfaces in the city, the asphalt, concrete, the roofs, they all absorb solar energy as heat rather than reflecting it or using it like the vegetation does in rural areas. Now, green roofs act a lot like vegetation in the rural areas if you were to put them in cities. And on the left here, you can see Chicago City Hall has a green roof, juxtaposed with a black conventional roof. And on the right, you can see that a thermal image of this exact same roof shows massive temperature differences, where yellow shows higher temperatures and darker purple shows cooler temperatures. Now, on the far right, you can see that black conventional roof shown in bright yellow, on an average day of about 70 degrees, it's over 150 degrees. And directly to its left, in darker purple, you can see the green roof is only about 75 degrees. This is a heat reduction of over about 50%. And this is because the green roof can shade the roof, reflect and use solar energy, and uh, even release heat through evapotranspiration, a process similar to human sweat. Now, imagine it rains on this roof, and you can see just sheets of rain just pouring down, and you can see how much water is going to run off of that black conventional roof, and how hot that runoff is going to be coming off of a 150-degree surface. And this is exactly what happens. Now, on the left, you can see a depiction of a rural area where 50% of all rainfall is absorbed, and only 10% is runoff. But in that urban area to the right, you can see that over half of all rainfall is runoff. That's over five times as much runoff in the city as in the rural areas. And that runoff carries with it pollution and heat from our streets and our sidewalks and our roofs directly into our waterways where we get our seafood. So green roofs act a lot like that vegetation, again, if you were to put them in cities. They can actually reduce runoff by between 60 and 90%. And the runoff that does wash out is filtered. Green roofs remove about 60 to 90 percent of cadmium, copper, and lead from stormwater. So if green roofs have all of these benefits, why are they not more common? 
Well, I asked several people this question, and they all told me, green roofs are too expensive. I don't want to have to mow my roof or water and weed my roof. But these are misconceptions. You don't actually have to mow your roof because, as you can see here, green roofs use low-growing ground cover plants, so they don't grow very high, and they're used specifically to be able to survive harsh growing environments on top of a roof. And green roofs cost about 50% more initially to install, but they、uh, extend your roof's lifespan by about 50%. So you automatically earn your money back simply from a prolonged roof lifespan. And every month you'll save money on your electricity bill because you have a significantly, significantly cooler roof, and you have an added layer of insulation on top of your roof. Now, built-up green roofs are the most common type of green roofs, and they're installed into roof in layers. So they require professional installation, and if you already have an existing roof, they require a complete re-roofing. So obviously, they're not very good for retrofitting an existing roof with a green roof. So to solve this problem, modular green roofs have been invented. And modular green roofs are self-contained green roofs, usually in small plastic boxes about two square feet, and they can be placed on top of existing roofs. So they do not require professional installation or a re-roofing. And along with being easier to install, modular green roofs are cheaper and lighter than built-up green roofs. So they're perfect for residential homes. The only problem is that there are no green roofs, modular green roofs, designed to be able to retain soil and water on a pitched roof, which is a major gap in the green roof market because the vast majority of us live in residential homes with pitched roofs. So there's no easy way. To retrofit and convert an existing roof with a green roof. Now,、uh, can built-up green roofs can be built on pitched roofs using a soil anchoring system, such as this you can see on the left. These systems can retain and support growing medium to prevent erosion, like you can see here on the right. But then, no such system exists to work with the self-contained aspect of a modular green roof to retain soil and water on a pitched roof. So last year, as I began writing my senior thesis, a two-year master's-level research thesis that every student in my high school must complete, I aim to fill this gap and design a new modular green roof specifically for pitched residential roofs. And you can see the module that I designed here on the right. There are two of them with those two white X's, and directly to their left, you can see existing green roof modules. That are designed for flat roofs, and I placed these four modules on this mock-up of a pitched roof, planted them, and grew them for a period of about four months. And I was able to prove that my modified green roof modules grow significantly better than the existing green roof modules on a pitched roof. And I could explain to you more about how I proved this, but you'd have to read all 55 pages of my thesis, and it wouldn't be very fun. <laughs> my hope is that one day. You can go down to your local hardware store and buy several green roof modules, bring them home, and build your own green roof on your own roof. But until then, what can we do? Well, first, I hope my talk has convinced you to consider getting a green roof next time you're building or renovating, or at least share the benefits of green roofs with those who are building or renovating. Share this talk with them, and maybe they'll get a green roof. And second, I want you to talk to your local, city, and state governments and support policies promoting or even requiring the use of green roofs. In parts of Germany, as you can see here, green roofs are required on all new buildings over a certain size. They are by far the most progressive country in terms of green roofs. They are the world leader. And why are we not doing this? We should be following in their footsteps. My vision is that one day, green roofs. Will become prevalent enough to significantly reduce the environmental problems faced by cities, and together we can make green the new black. Thank you.